Adjustments incoming, adjustments incoming. And it looks like Nightmare might be a viable hunter for once. For more news like this, stick around for this week's episode of This Week in Identity 5. Welcome back everyone to another episode of This Week in Identity 5. We've got a lot to talk about, so I will not delay you guys anymore. Let's talk about what we got last week. In last week's update, we started the final push event that is happening just before the start of the new season, season 19. This will be ending on the 2nd of December. What the final push includes is you get a small increase in the amount of uh, experience that you get, or technically logic experience that you get. Um, so this means you can get more dice and so on and so on, and your weekly limit has been increased slightly so that you can play a little bit more to be able to get the dice for the next season or to get that accessory or the skin if you didn't get it already from the previous logic path that we have right now with the common skin for priestess. Over the past few days we also had Mad Eyes character day that was an interesting event because not that many people play Mad Eyes and I got to play him both on stream and also for the character day event and it was a lot of fun. He's a strong character as long as you know how to play him but he is weak depending on different types of maps. He's good on some maps, weak on others. By completing his missions, you could get a portrait frame and also get yourself a coin to be able to buy one of the things from previous birthdays that you may have uh, not been around for or just missed for some reason. Nightmare is now available in single training mode and has been for about a week and also available in Geo Hunters. That, that one took me by surprise. We saw that on the stream that I did with Roland from Before You. If you haven't checked that one out, go and check it out. You can find it on my channel. Hint hint, Roland played Nightmare. Along with Novelist who is now available in single training mode but not in any of the other modes as far as I know. And Little Girl who is available in Duo Hunters, Blackjack, Tarot and also Chasing Shadow mode. That is interesting. Uh, she is incredibly powerful in Duo Hunters. Quite a few different team compositions have uh, arisen from that. Uh, and she is possibly the best Squire in the game right now. As for bug fixes, they gave us a ton of bug fixes for Novelist because Novelist, still three or four weeks into this now, is still breaking the game. He still keeps on crashing things, uh, different hunters having bad interactions with things and effects and stuff like that. Um, yeah, he has broken the game quite a lot, so that's a pain. But we also got a reveal for Prospector's Deduction Skin. We got the proper art for it and it looks very, very nice. I know a lot of people are very excited about getting this skin. Moving on to the chaos that we could possibly expect in this week's update, we have a ton of adjustments that possibly could come this week, but could also more probably come in the next two to three weeks. But it's always possible that they'll come out this week, and I really do hope that some of them will at least come out this week. The start of Season 19 is confirmed to be happening, where we'll be getting the s -tier skin for Novelist, that is a very impressive skin, along with two very impressive skins for Acrobat and Sia. I must say that the quality of these skins uh, are really amazing, I must say. Uh, it feels like Netties has put a ton of effort into their skins in the past few essences. Along with the new season, we'll also be getting a rank reset, so make sure also that you save up 100 dice before the uh, new season begins. Anything over 100 dice will not transfer over to the new season, so make sure that you use any that go over that. We've had the new rank accessories revealed. We have an S tier accessory for forward, I believe, and two A tier, um, A -tier accessories, one's for breaking wheel and one for batter. The batter one, in my opinion, is not very impressive at all, but you know, it has some visual effects that kind of make him stand out a little bit more than just the base effects and the base skin, of course. We also have a pretty interesting one for Breaking Wheel that has a coin flipping ability whenever he transforms that, in my opinion, looks not too impressive and looks a little bit cheap, but hey, it's better than just having nothing, I guess. And the forward one that is going to be very confusing for the hunter because it leaves little trail marks behind uh, little kind of versions or mirror versions of the forward as he does actions like vaulting and stuff like that. Uh, could be a little bit of a pain to be able to wrap your head around as a hunter, but hey, it's a nice looking accessory. We have so many adjustments that possibly could come out this week, but probably will come out in the next two weeks. But we'll find out soon enough. Some of the adjustments are, for example, Toy Merchant, who will be getting her catapults slightly adjusted. Now all survivors will be able to see the locations of the catapults. That does help in her kind of being an assist kite character. And it will take a little bit longer for a hunter to break the catapults, being increased from 1 second to 1.5 seconds to break, I believe. Enchantress. I'm not too happy about Enchantress's uh, buff. She has become 
less of a skill character now. Her stuns charge incredibly quite quick now, but they do take longer depending on the stack. So the first one is super fast, the second one is slightly slower, and they get slower until you get to number five. Also, I believe her range has been increased, so she can now get stuns from a further distance. And I think that's about it, but she, I, if you watch some videos on her changes, she can get stuns so quickly now. Prospector got a small adjustment that I think is going to be a powerful one for him. His magnets will now prioritize hunters over survivors, so that's a very good thing, meaning that he'll be able to assist more in different game modes along with just the quick match mode. Patient has had a pretty heavy nerf now because he's been played pretty competitively for, uh, since his release. He will now have a slightly shorter distance when he pushes himself off from a wall. They've added a gravity style effect where he will kind of arc much sooner than he used to. So his ability will be less like an elbow pad, but can still be used to be able to vault over walls and get into windows and so on and so on. Mechanic has had a very strong nerf that has uh, people have been asking for for quite a while now. Her bot's decoding speed has been decreased considerably from 125% down to 110%, and they've completely removed the 3% buff that she gives to all the members of her team. So that means that decoding with a mechanic will be much slower and she won't be able to abuse her bot as much as she used to be. This I think has put mechanic in a healthy spot because she's still a strong character overall due to her being like a technical five, five players versus one hunter. Now she will be less uh, overwhelming you could say. Little girl has finally got all the nerfs that people have been asking for. Maybe now she might be a bit more of a balanced character, but we have yet to see. She, her echo time, her pages as we call them, her charging time has been increased from 45 seconds to 60 seconds. She gets a page and 0.25 of a page at the beginning of a match instead of just one page. So she does get her pages a little bit sooner in the beginning of the match. And her pages don't push as far. They, they are apparently going to shorten the distance of those pushes. Her sinking cooldown has been increased from 20 seconds to 30 seconds. So it takes her longer to be able to sync up with someone. And she needs to be closer to the survivor to be able to do the sinking. They've uh, halved the distance, 3.4 meters to be exact, instead of 6.8 that was before. And something that was very necessary for her is that she can now not sync with the survivor after being rescued for 20 seconds. This means that you can't quickly sync onto the rescuer and then be protected. It does force you to kite the hunter after being rescued. Postman has got a nerf and some people say it's a big one, some people say it's a small one. I think it's something that is an interesting nerf to him. His dog distance firing, I guess technically when you fire it, has been decreased from 1.69 meters down to 1.27, so the dog doesn't go as far, but it's not as big of a change as you would think. But the cooldown if you miss the dog has been increased almost double. That can be a problem, but it does reward you more if you manage to latch the dog onto the survivor. Bata has also received a big nerf. His knockback distance has been decreased when he's both in his uh, rage rampage form and also not in his rampage form. If he's not in rampage form, his maximum has been decreased from, from 5.08 meters down to 4.14 meters. That is a big difference. And his rampage has been changed from 10.15 to 8. 18 that is a very strong uh, nerf as well they've also shortened the amount of time that it stuns the hunter from 3.75 seconds to 3 seconds this means that batters won't just be able to hit the hunter and then just run for it they actually need to use their abilities a bit more carefully psychologists bubble you could say has been decreased in how much time it's actually live for and if you're playing multiple psychologists the amount of time it takes for you to use empathy has been increased depending on how many psychologists are in your team. That is a good nerf because a lot of players like to abuse abilities uh, by taking multiple of the same person. Imbalma has had a very strong buff. His casting time for bringing up the coffin when he first uses it, when he uses it in general, has been decreased from 5 seconds to 2.5. It's so fast now. And you'll be able to exit the coffin when you get revived 0.5 seconds faster. And his memorizing the face has been incredibly buffed by giving him a previously 12.7 meter radius to be able to memorize his face up to 21.9 meters. So now he'll be able to memorize faces from much further away that makes him more viable as that type of assist character. All survivors will also be getting a crawling speed increase of 40%. 
But to be able to counter that, they've also nerfed sticker, bringing it down to 30, 60 and 90% increase depending on the stacks that you get of sticker. This is going to be very strong for hut survivors overall though, because not everyone takes sticker and everyone will be getting an extra 40% increase in speed when they are crawling. Sculptor has got a nerf, but maybe not the exact nerf that everyone wanted her to get. Her Statue of Nobility firing speed has been delayed just a tiny bit by 0.2 seconds. That is actually a bigger change than you'd expect because it gives you more time to react and kind of work out which way the, the nobility thing is going to fire, but it will take some adjustment from survivors who know how to kite her already. Soul Weaver has, is getting a buff, and it's a very small one, but it might be very impactful and might make her meta because now they give her 10 extra webs at the beginning of the match. This means that she'll have a better early game, and this is exactly what spiders need. Gamekeeper is getting a, more of an adjustment instead of a buff, but it kind of is a buff if you think about it, because Gamekeeper will now have a marker that will appear when he is able to hit a wall. So it will make it so that Gamekeepers don't miss walls or objects when they want to pull themselves towards it uh, anymore. Meaning that, hey, I guess that helps them stop missing hooks. That's a good thing. Helember is getting a buff, but it's also pretty much just what he already had, but just given to him as a kit ability instead, and not just a gimmick that, they, they, that he had before. He can now do the puppet trick, where he will teleport and hit a survivor who's between him and the puppet uh, with both of his puppets. And you should be able to see a red marker now between you and your puppet, meaning you'll be able to aim that much better. Undead is getting the ability to remove the dungeon, but it's not as strong as you may think. It takes a very long time for him to be able to close the dungeon. The animation is very long and to which survivors can, get in, can escape from the dungeon whilst you're doing it and the survivors will be able to see where you've relocated it to and they'll also be able to see your location. This means that this plus the increased uh, crawling speed does mean that Percy is not looking that viable anymore, even if he was viable in the first place. Moving on to what we can expect from the future, the duck skin that was announced or kind of rumored last week that I talked about has finally been confirmed and it's an event for China. It is a bee duck crossover to which I know nothing about what that is, but it's possible that we will get that over on our side, maybe at the same time or maybe later on, but it's a very interesting crossover and the skin as we've already seen from the renders looks incredible. There's also been a render for a breaking wheel skin that is kind of a Koa 4 themed one where he's kind of got some race painting on him and a flag on him. Possibly it's a render for Koa 5, but I think it might just be a skin that will be released as a Koa 4 add-on maybe for next year's event. Who knows? We'll find out soon enough. I wouldn't say it's the most impressive skin though. It's just a recolor, possibly a B tier skin. We've had leaked a fourth anniversary offline pack that gives you an interesting frame and portrait that is a very nice looking geisha thing along with some other things that I'm not completely sure what they are. But that might mean that we'll get some type of special pack in the future with some nice stuff. Let's move on to the talk in the manner now where I respond to your comments on my recent videos. The first comment is from Taruchi that says, I got distracted with the matches and didn't really pay attention to the conversation. I gotta watch it again. Lol. Yes, this is the video that I released recently with Roland where we had a long interview and I had some people from the Discord provide me with some gameplay to be able to entertain you whilst you're listening. And the gameplay, I must say, was very, very impressive. Uh, we had a very strong axe boy who was hitting all of the fireballs that were very, was very, very impressive. Um, and yeah, I cannot blame you for being distracted by the gameplay. It was very, very good. I hope you liked Roland's interview as well. Da Potato Man says, you should make another video with Roland to give people tips. Well, we've already done some collaborations in the past. Uh, we'll leave a link above. Um, but I'm not sure if we will do any more co collaborations in the future. Hopefully we will because he, seemed, he is a very nice guy and very chill. And he does seem to really care about the Identity 5 community and giving them information. So if you guys really, really want it and you can convince him, then maybe yeah, we might be able to do a tips video with him. Sally A says, and while you're looping, be sure to look behind you so you can see the hunter crying, especially Paloon or Percy. Don't want to miss that. So this is talking about the looping video of the uh, incredibly strong loop that we have in Dark Woods. 
yes, I do feel like if you, uh, it's a good idea to look back and watch as the hunter dies of sadness as they watch you go round and round and round and round and round, and round, and round, and round the big treehouse area. It is an incredibly strong kiting area that I'm waiting for Nettie's to be able to nerf, but I'm not sure when they will do it, if ever. I do ask that you guys don't abuse it too much because it is very, very strong against a lot of different hunters, although some hunters are countered by it. Do you think that these adjustments are going to change drastically what the meta is? And do you think that hunters are going to be in a better place or in a worse place than they are already? Tell me down in the comments below. And whilst you're down there, remember to like and subscribe if you want to get more stuff, more videos like this every week to keep yourself up to date with the rest of the Identity 5 community. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.